Welcome back, everybody. That was the first blue screen of death on my new computer. You know it. Uh, it's nothing like a bit of an L <laughs> take. You no, know, low budget LCS has to have a pause. It's tradition. La Chance licks toes and La PC go crunch. They yeah. go hand in hand, man. I mean, listen, I'm just trying to live up to the standard that LaChance sets. I think he had four stream restarts <laughs> the other day. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was only on the tail end of the stream here. As we we're actually slapping Gromp as a Garen here. This madman. Okay, let's get us up to speed here, Pop. Let's uh get every let the folks at home know what we missed as we're... It Okay, it is what's... one to five. It looks like Sushi Monster has done an absolutely beautiful job on this Zaya getting the kills, being assisted by Shady Gecko on the Poppy. Shady Gecko on the Poppy also has picked up the Herald. It is one to one in terms of jungle objectives and a 3k gold lead. 14 fried chicken overall. That's the fight is kicked off, cleansing away from the initial Aleona combo is this Varus here as Andy's just getting himself wiped out in the top side river. And the bot lane fight's gonna peter out with the dredge line slightly slipping off to the side, rooting and stunning up each other as they're still ready to go. Okay, they're gonna continue pressing forwards here. Blade Caller does lock him down and it will pick up yet another for Sushi Monster. And with summoners expended on the blue team bot lane, bad goes to worse down there for the Varus. I am realizing why they banned Zaya in game one. Holy cow, Sushi looks like an absolute beast on this champ. Also, little robot man, oh shit, new stream, LeChance Licks Toes. That is how it's done. That is the <laughs> pinnacle of class gamers. Oh, that's... Um, I mean, Only Earl three King, resets holy stuff. shit, 120 CS in 13 minutes. Like, 9 CS a minute here. As Tibbers and Cataclysm says bye bye to Earl Keen, grabbing one back. Poppy is here a day late and a dollar short. As J4 is still ready to go here. Okay, sitting in this bush, Hex Flush that we were talking about slammed against the wall is this Poppy. But sliding forwards, Flag and Drag onto the Leona is not the target that you want. So many resistances. Tibbers is simply scratching at them. And the zombie will soon fall as Frankenstein returns to meet his maker. And we finally settle here. All right, catch us up on this because we missed out on a ton here in terms of game yeah. state. I mean, we did just curse Earl King. We're back for like 20 seconds and we instantly cast a curse. So good to know our powers are ready to go. Um, yeah, overall, it looks like Team Fried Chicken have been relatively proactive. Um, we do have uh, the kill that we just saw get onto Piss Jug as well as a kill that Avingus picked up at some point, likely on the poppy when she came to gank bot lane. Um, Cassante's doing Cassante things though. He has Mythic, which is usually the point at which um, the game is over, in my opinion. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you combine that with the fact that he's into uh, AD top sides with that Mythic that we're talking about. Trying to channel back oh. here is this Annie and will simply burn for it. Blade Caller locks down two, is able to get their Poppy out alive here, but Annie just getting blown to smithereens in that Chaos Storm, as it seems like we got a bit of a snowball rolling here for the red side, KFC off to the races. Yeah, 5k up pretty early on. We're looking at the next Drake gonna be here in... What is the next trick here? Why isn't it showing up on my objective timers? Or is it 56 seconds? That's, oh yeah, 56 seconds. Okay, I'm just blind. Don't mind me. As uh, they are going to be taking tier two of mid. They are indeed here. Shelly able to bonk their head on that tower. And that is so much gold. I know casters always love to talk about how much gold is in T2s, but there's so much gold in T2s. Mm. There's just so much money. There is a lot of gold in T2s, however, when you do this and you're not uh, able to, like, fully push out the... Oh. Even think it's just edge. Just, just there's, there's nothing more to oh. say. I think you would drop your point here. Bot lane is able to snag up that blast cone as Sushi Monster gets paid. 4-0 scoreline. Yeah, this, this may have needed to stay on the bench here if you're one of those fans of this blue team. Volatility. Yeah, the, the thing about um, taking that early tier 2 mid, though, is it does make it so that the waves 
if they're not meeting in the middle, uh, if you can freeze it sort of all the way back down the lane, can be very hard for Victor to continue getting these resources. Sante is just pouring so much damage into this J4, going all out here. Q3 is able to interrupt the flag and drag as Gatozo Zero gets a 2v1, and I'm pretty sure your estimation was right. Cassante hits Mythic, and I'm pretty sure Nexus explodes. Isn't that what happens? Yeah. You buy the item, and it's just it's just over. Nexus goes boom. Yeah, it's like, have you ever played Magic the Gathering? I have not. Okay. In Magic the Gathering, there's a game uh, called... Or a game? God, my brain. I think I mm -hmm. besotted my neural system as well. Don't worry <laughs> yeah. about it. Um, right. There's a card called door to nothingness or gateway to nothingness and all that card says is target player loses the game if you can activate it oh, okay so i that's kind of what i see when i see kasante <laughs> with mythic it's like oh you let kasante get mythic okay you lose the game <laughs> target team loses their nexus as that champion <laughs> is Already up to not only a mythic, but a sunfire on top of it. He's still rocking around with some brown paper bags on his feet. He doesn't care. He doesn't really... Hey, he's ignoring the Varus, too. This is just insulting at this point. Yeah. He's in a 1v2. He's just ignoring him and beating his turret down. Ultimate is not available. Ghost is not available. Okay. Hitting those chains is this Varus, but he seems to be having a bit of a problem in uh, doing damage. Eventually, Ooh. we'll be shut down. Okay. The Garen ult dropping the massive sword on his head drops this true damage cutting through all those resistances. There's a bit of a scuffle life. in the jungle here. Got a rumble in the jungle. J4 is waiting on that spell. Dredge line will not be able to connect here. It sits against the wall instead, and he will die for it. Does have that flash available, but soon to fall. There it is. Does expend the summoner on top of it, and it's just shambles here as the blue team in full retreat. Flashing forwards is this victor. Uh, if he had a better build, he would get the kill as J4. <laughs> Damn it! No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, J4 a little bit. J4 was almost out of here. I spoke too soon. That's three uh, caster curses. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, so we're just under towers now, like we're just down to clown here. Earl King is on a rampage between Nexus towers. <laughs> it's just going ugly here. What can he do here? Underneath the turret, steps away from the dredge line, and deciding to give the kill to the turret as shutdown going over to the Varus. It's it's just full on cue the clown music here, Pap. Yeah, I I'm so sad that if Dingus did not go AP here. It's honestly because if I feel like if okay. Here's my scalding hot take. Okay. Varus sells all of his items and buys Riftmaker. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Wow. Did you, did you? Okay, you might have missed that. Did you see the execution on that bot lane play here, Pop? Did I mean, you watch the, the mechanisms of this man's brain as he went through that rotation of spells as J4 is also just dead because playing into Poppy's fun? Yeah, it, I, I mean, this game is just chaos. I love it. Hey guys, are we sure that this is the wrong Victor build? Yeah, why does he have a, a cosmic alternator? Huh? What's that gonna build into? Some sort of nerd item, right? Some sort yeah. of spell item. Does well, actually, not look like a national tooth. As two Shady Gecko plays Piss Drug. Okay, the bot lane's here to reinforce, but with the ultimate not having the damage, but the shots are plenty. Shut down going over to the Annie as Tibbers ends up soaking this one up, getting some revenge for his owner as Exhaust drops, not changing very much about the move speed of this Cassante as he goes on out of there. And certified banger territory once again crested here, 16 to 6 at the 20 minute mark. Yeah, 6k gold lead here for Team Fried Chicken. Although, I do want to point out, it is not that dissimilar to the gold lead that they had in last game. Did they win last game? Yes. Did Team Volatility make it look incredibly close? Also, yes. So, I mean, it looks like they have the tools. Speaking of the tools, Earl King might be in a little bit of trouble here. The tools are not quite available. Does not have that ultimate on the Garen. Has to flash out of the Chaos Storm. J4 does have that Cataclysm. He doesn't want to expend it so far, eventually dropping it. But he's in the Gravity Well himself as they're both locked down. Fighting in a phone booth. You like to favor the melee champion down four levels nonetheless. As stepping away from the Flag and Dragon, forcing the flash is this mid laner. As Earl King, with no mana and no problems, fights his way out of the corner. Did they add like a hundred armor to Roa? Or what did I just watch? <laughs> I I think he went I think he went stone plate after all, honestly. By the looks of that fight. Oh yeah, it's just glitched. I see that. The Phoenix yeah, Codex yeah. is actually a fully completed gargoyle stone plate. Yeah, 
And oh. we blue screened the item select too. So your brain, the stream, and the item updates here. Cause mm -hmm. that, he did not actually take any damage in that phone booth. <laughs> I see. Oh, yeah. Well, J4 gonna be pretty devastated about that one. Not gonna be able to do too much this game. It is such a hard game to play J4 too, because all of the, like, even Earl King at this point, he's like, yeah, just come into me, right? Sushi yeah. Monster and Earl King, they do not mind the Jarvan diving into them at this point. Oh, but I love this. I, I, lo I was going to say, I was going to let you finish your point. I love this, just the Fanatic no, Death Brush, no, no. some old school flavor. They've cut him off here. Ah. Okay, they've got a four versus three. They do have numbers applied. They do have Tibbers trying to be able to apply that stone to everybody. Uh, Poppy simply evicts them. That Leona was going to kill herself if she took that E. I'm not even going to front. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If that E landed, she was dead. So, Vexy uh, will Poo, die. Testing limits. <laughs> testing limits on that one. Earl As King Tibbers does check. get committed here, but the Roa health is so much. Into the Kaiserism dropping up too so far, but just so much damage out of the carries of this red team. Not even Tibbers is able to turn this into a winning fight. So, Team Fried Chicken are still favored here. They do have numbers advantage, and Cassante has arrived to the party, flipping two on in with that Q3, and with his carries a respectable distance behind him. Punching Nautilus Ooh. three screens away and getting away with it as we were talking about it being pretty stable and pretty calm for a moment. It's uh, it's getting it's getting a little bit out of hand here for this blue side. Yeah, the chickens are due to be appear to be flying the coop, as it were. Um, it oh my god, do you know what that just? I don't know why. Saying that just pulled up the most intense memory of... Have you ever seen Chicken Run? Yes, I have seen Chicken Run. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I didn't know what the, what the, the, the vibes kind of were here. I have been refraining from making, like, horrendous dad jokes about chicken jokes and frying oh, jokes it. and chefing, chefing it, it up here. But uh, if, if we're going into Chicken Run territory, it's for the culture, man. We gotta do it. Yeah, absolutely. That is what we we are all about the jokes here at the low budget LCS. Um, yeah, no, I, they're just pulling a full chicken run here. You know, they, they're building an airplane and they are Under getting out of something. Her is flashing away from the ult here as Garen is going to try and get something back on it. Trunk down to half health, but the gravity whale will be able to buy the space available. He does have seven level advantage here as Tibbers whips oh. once more. He's trying to make his way through the minefield. Will eventually fall to sheer volume as J4 caught so far oh. from home. He is just eviscerated by Sushi Monster. And with that smite down and no Cho'Gath's on the rift, red team is going to be able to set their sights on this Baron. Both of those fights for each team, we saw some beautiful maneuvering. I mean, all credit to Earl King. Beautiful flash through the turret, get the solo kill onto the Garen. Eventually you die because Volatility managed to have one teammate coming from every vector possible for you to escape. So it, it was... <laughs> back it it, it it was impossible um yeah, yeah, and yeah then there was no way out poppy cutting off the escape route of the j4 knowing he wants to flag and drag that way uh, it's just beautiful it's, it's like i could see myself doing the the football thing where you like draw your little x's and your little arrow and then oh yeah 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 <laughs> trying to make sure everyone's rotating in the perfect spots cut off all angles and yeah that's what that looked like like, a, <laughs> like an american football like linebackers blocking all the exits yeah 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 ah oh, very good wow i don't know if you caught that did you see any damage onto the cassante yeah, yeah it, it moved his health bar which is honestly impressive it, it actually did i was really expecting it to just be eaten by the e shield but I think it did a grand total of 130 health damage plus that shield as J4 is going for something heroic. Able to knock Ooh. up two, trapping three into Cataclysm. This is about the best that you're going to get out of the blue team here. Locking them down, sending them up. Tabor's able to lock down two here. Garen gets one back. It's going to be a three, four, zero if they're able to grab up this Poppy. She does have that force of nature. She is exhausted and slowed with the Stride Breaker to lock her down and will soon fall. A thousand paper cuts will eventually drop Shady Gecko and J4 keeps on swinging he is not ready to let this one die quite yet and making a massive massive play given the circumstances team volatility showing us they may be down but they are not out for the count 
and making an absolutely beautiful play there, stalling out the game, getting a ton of shutdowns, injecting money. We can look at the total gold here. I mean, it looks pretty dire overall. The mid lane difference is absolutely massive, but if Dingus has managed to accumulate a 2,000 gold lead on his counterpart, has three items completed here on this Varus, and while he might not be AP, a Rage Blade Varus is going to be able to do some amount of damage to your tanks regardless. Now, we do also have a very important question from chat. Would you rather be a manager or the head chef at KFC? Would I rather be a manager or a head chef at KFC? Oh, I'd rather be head chef, man. Putting me in front of people. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Bro, I love to talk, right? That's mm. I, I'm, I wouldn't be here if I didn't love to talk. But putting me in front of retail jobs is a little bit like nails on a chalkboard if I had to do it continuously. So let me just chef it up. Let me just cook and grill and have the time of my life. And the back of house has more fun anyway. Mm. Back of house does have more fun. Honestly, just put me in the manager position and I'll make sure that the KFC is closed in a month because every time some customer is like, <laughs> oh, this happened, I, I'll be, I don't care. They'll be like, ah, uh, cry about it, uh, who cares? <laughs> Leona is soaking a huge amount of damage here. The first set of first is gonna be able to pick up Vexy Poo. Slamming two into the wall here with Cataclysm locking down that back line. Victor is tied up. Chaos Storm is available, but there's just so much damage. Garen and J4 both falling despite the majority of the team being locked down as Cassante, no fear, ghosting forward, trying to Spider-Man away. Is this Nautilus? He's a little bit indecisive whether he can get anything done. The answer is no, as Poppy continues rampaging forwards, locked down underneath the turret, popping up three here, Nautilus and the bot laner. Now it's a heroic last stand, trying to get what they can, but there is simply no damage being taken. Cassante goes where he damn well pleases and aces Team Volatility with the help of his squad. Five for zero, peeling back over to that soul. And it's looking a little bit like that Magic the Gathering card you talked about as Magi's is built and Nexus is doomed. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing about that Magic the Gathering card that Sammy Two Slab actually did point out was that um, it requires two of every kind of mana. So maybe Cassante oh. getting Mythic isn't GG, but Cassante having Mythic, an MR item, an Armor item, maybe that is. Right? I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He so he needs this. He needs like boots and mm -hmm. an MR and a Mythic and an AD, and they die. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just that's Nexus exploded. That checks out, honestly. Actually, I think that, he that's needs... also. I think he needs one of every kind of hard indexing item. So I think actually what he needs to build here. Um, is IE, even though I know he can't, but he needs to do it anyway, oh. and Death Cap. And that way okay, he'll have. Two land. You're trying to get this a little bit of a shutdown back, but the shield out of Cassante will not do it. Okay, he will still fall. Garen does pick up that shutdown, exhausting this Cassante. What can they get done? Putting the shots into him as much as possible with that extra AD that you mentioned from this Varus, but he is taking massive damage on the back of it as Annie will pick him up. Their base will be slammed in the meantime. Down in the bot lane. The bot lane themselves, back where they are at home, wearing the soul, will put shots into the inhib. It will soon fall. J4 is the next one in their sights, getting stunned up and locked down by that Leona ultimate as the swag flag shuts down Sushi Munster. And all things considered, Team Volatility hold the line. Yeah, time and time again. They find angles, they catch you out. If you misstep against this team, they are going to find you. And just bit by bit, the damage is coming out here. You have double mask here for Annie, which I don't think is normally what you want to build on Annie, but is absolutely what you want to build against this team. And they have a lot of tools. Those tanks. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I mean, both Garen and Jarvan have the Black Cleaver. That's gonna help them shred down the armor on this Poppy, on this Cassante, whose builds look shockingly identical um they're very scary looking as leona does sail into four we do have a bit of a scrap coming out poppy is on that flank and shoving the varus that's the lion's share of the damage getting locked down by this poppy soon to fall there it is and with the back line exploded how much more can you possibly do for volatility the answer is not a goddamn thing pentakill going over to this victor 
acing them single-handedly with the reinforcements from his team and emphatically closing out this series as KFC is able to run into the sunset open in Hibs as they will march their way through the streets and claim up their prize. KFC picking this one up. Broking gonna go for that last little bit of farm after his pentakill here in game two of this series for Financial Group A. And Team Fried Chicken are 100% gonna show why they are in first place. That was a statement on the tail end of it here. I love Beautiful, the call out from Sushi Monster in the chat. Earl King resource vacuum. <laughs> like legit. <laughs> Just suck everything up and then dump it all onto the heads of this poor Varus. He just got the mountain dropped on him, and... Ooh, baby, what a way to close that one out. That was fire here. Okay, now, usually we do do interviews. Um, okay. So, is there anyone in particular from Team Fried Chicken who you would like to interview? Uh, no, Team Fried Chicken... I mean, the, the obvious one would probably be Earl King, but I would be happy with Vexy Poo too. Vexy Honestly, Poo would be great. Honestly, also, just because I don't personally know them as well, I'd love to hear from Shady Gecko. Because I've seen Gap Topsu, I've seen Earl King, I've seen Sushi, I've seen Vectrax. Shady Gecko was a, a bit new to me, and I think they played a critical role um, in this game. But it looks I like would... we have the man, the myth, the Gap Topsu, Gatatsu Zero. <laughs> What's poppin'? How's it going, everybody? It is... Welcome aboard, sir. How did that feel playing Cassante? Finally getting that into your hands. This this champ's silly, man. I just started playing him <laughs> last week, and I'm like, uh, you know, he's kind of good. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's just run yeah, around. At what, that at what point with Cassante would you say the game ends for the enemy team? Is it after Mythic? Is it after two items? Where Where is the point of no return? So... So really with Cassante, what you're trying to do is mental boom someone. Whether it's somebody hard counter picking you top and then you never die, and then you flip into the turret and maybe kill him. Or you just pull an AD carry, clear out to Narnia. Once you get like that first fight where you just really boom somebody, that's that's when it's over. Uh, but in all seriousness, I, I think like three items, he's just, like so unbelievably strong at three items. So like it gets really hard for just about any AD carry to really pop you once you ult. So like... He kind of hits that horizon at three items. Three items. Okay, so that's that's your answer, Pap. So the three items is when we get that door to Nowheresville. What's that called again? Remind me. You door to nothingness. Door to nothingness. Oh, nice. nothingness. <laughs> yeah, that, that's when it's like truly like he, he feels so good. Everything after that is like uh, just cherry on top, you know? Now, talk to us a little bit about this team dynamic. Um, from From what I see sometimes with your team i know vexrax has been kind of the soul of team fried chicken for a long time is sorry is vexy poo mainly your shot <laughs> caller or um, how, how does the communication go so with this team iteration it's just a little it's a little different vexrax is still very very active in in comms and he does a lot of yelling he does a, a lot of uh target calls during team fights as well there's a lot of screaming from the side of Exifu, which is really great. It gets me hyped up, jazzed up. It keeps you, like, thinking about plays. But the actual, like, deciding what plays are happening kind of... It comes down to a bit more team effort. Like, with me and me and Earl King in mid, we tend to talk more about, like, what we're doing with side lanes and how we're pushing macro stuff, which is why it was really bad. This one, it's neither of us really thought about it. He just... He's running it down on uh, Rod of Ages, Horizon Focus Victor, having a good time of his life. <laughs> so, you know, we're just <laughs> sending the whole game, but... Um, As a top laner, when you snap your camera down and you see him currently wailing away on their Nexus turrets when T2 isn't even down, how does that feel? Because he's just uh, taking a magical journey into their base. He he took he took my job. My job's supposed to be to backdoor it in the game, but here he is pressing Lich Bane Q spams. Yeah, yeah, I love this build. I, I'll actually defend this build. I actually think it was a really good choice this game. Uh, Horizon Vocus, you could argue for like just just go Rabadons, but everything else, I think I. I, I Kingpin Victor here, El Jefe, 
<laughs> the, the resource vacuum, I think somebody had mentioned, where they just <laughs> soak just everything the up. Game, the whole game, we're like, oh, we're getting into so many ganks, and he's just throwing the game away with this build the whole game. <laughs> so funny. Resource vacuum, takes it all, gives nothing back. What a legend. <laughs> now, can you talk to us a little bit about um, drafting and maybe a little bit about your picking game one? So I noticed you guys banned out the cannon a lot. Um, was that something that was more comfort for you, or was that more from a team fight angle? Uh, so I know, uh, looking at what Papa Dog was playing, like in rank, he's played a lot of cannon. I don't know if he wants to play it a lot in comp. It's been banned from them a lot in comp. And I think it's just a really good choice because cannon, cannon's really frustrating. Like I like playing cannon too. Cannon's pretty awesome, but. It's kind of awkward to pick a lot of stuff into him because even if you like neutralize, there's uh, he's always going to get his flash right, and then he's always going to press our flash, and people are going to die. They just explode. Oh. So if you build comps like what we have here, it's what we have in game two, for instance, is a lot harder for Kenan to really go wild because we have a lot of CC and a lot of big bulky stuff, but mm. all of our damage is on Victor's Eye. So Kenan R flashes and kills Victor's Eye because Kenan moment, and suddenly the game's really hard to play. Uh, so I just don't like how much he can kind of coin flip games. So we figured we'd just take it off the table. I didn't have anything really prepared to just slam into it. Like, B1 cannon, what do I pick? Uh, mm, not really sure. But just, you I'll slam, it slam out. the mojo on the back half of it. You actually yeah, you like, cannot Mundo's do really it. really like, nice no, until, like, he R flashes your team, and then you're just yeah, like, oh, I'm the Mundo. <laughs> like, That's true. <laughs> Especially, like you said, like, out of game one there, if you're playing Ash Syndra and you have a cannon on your head... Like, how do you play the game? Like, yeah, it's all about spacing the cannon with that, which Syndra's good at, but, uh, like, we don't know we're going to pick Syndra, right, going into it. We're not like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, B4-5, four, four, we're definitely grabbing Syndra here. So, like, we want to be able to stay flexible with our draft stuff, and if we end up, like, pinching ourselves into, like, two hard carries, the rest of the map is, like, peeling for them, and, and Kenan coin flips the game, it feels really bad, so. Um, yeah, uh, I'd also I would also play Kenan. I was kind of thinking like maybe we just grab Kenan, but then I'm like, uh, I don't know, maybe he has something spicy and I'm not I haven't been spamming Kenan as much, so I just don't know like the how badly I could get countered yet. Because every time I pick him, I'm just like, well yeah, this game's not too bad. And then Olaf exists. Olaf. Olaf Ooh, is annoying. That's oh true. No. Very champ. Can you talk to me at all about the AD carry priority here? You guys took the Ash in game one. Game two, you ended up getting the Zaya. Was the Jinx on their part a pick away? Or was that something you were expecting? Because I know of Dingus, and you might know of Dingus as a Sivir main. <laughs> I, do, I do know uh, of Dingus as a Sivir main. But we've been seeing, like, Jinx is really high prio just in a lot of these leagues. And for us, it's pretty good. So it was definitely a pick away in game one. Uh, when they banded on blue side in game two, we knew that... It was going to be jungle B1 priority, similar to what we did the last game with this uh, Maokai Jarvan matchup and looking for the Poppy into Jarvan. That's why we left uh, Poppy up going into game two. Mm. Just kind of, it's something that Shady is really comfortable with, and it it shows a lot in the gameplay that like it worked out really well. So, right. um, yeah, definitely the eighty carry picks though. Like uh, Jinx was a. Jinx is just really good. Once again, it's another one where like you can get really behind into a game, you can be like fighting back, and then Jinx gets these resets and fights, and suddenly she pops off, and it's really hard. Like it's, it's suddenly the game's in your favor, right? Like when you get these mm. uh, snowballing fights. So Jinx is really good at uh, setting up these kind of resource fights. Kind of that coin flip, kind of like what I was talking with Kenan, just not as uh, obvious because Kenan's is really like blatant. Our flash in the game when, moment. When you kill three people with a button press. It feels pretty pretty impactful. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> All right, sandbag. Do you have any other questions? The only thing, just the the parting shot is, as the resident top laner among us here, mm. is there mm -hmm. something that you? I don't want you to leak any prep if you have anything spicy. But if is there something that you think should be played that you're not seeing much of? Because we were like theory crafting some silliness, okay. you know, stuff like your like the Chogaths with the Roas and like kind of silliness. Is there something that you want to be able to have people, you know, to lab out a little bit and kind of kind of explore options? That's not necessarily your prep, but well, that you want to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
I, I think I'll just go with it on like a, a my prep side, like because I'm not even sure if I'll ever play it. But like, I really want to understand how. If you've watched LPL at all, you've seen OMG Shanji plays Rumble and he B ones Rumble and he wins games instantly. Like it looks like it's his entire game, and I don't know how he does it. I don't understand it. I want to know. I like Rumble. He's really fun. But I, I like that's that's the big one for me. Is like if Rumble's actually like really strong like shanji makes him look i'd like to understand why and be able to just kind of like pop off with it because god damn what a you chance. swear certain <laughs> champions just feel like they do more damage in other people's hands like my jace eqs do not do the same amount of da- jace eq damage that these pros get out of it like i swear rumble <laughs> ult just has more damage if you're a high elo top later mm. pretty much yeah. yeah the high actually it's um one of the modifiers in there that you can't see is the hidden elo. So your hidden elo gets added on uh, to the oh. damage. Yeah, an elo oh, yeah, ratio yeah. as an uh-huh. AP ratio and an elo ratio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, my, my tip for my tip for playing Cassante is that every single time you ult, you gotta you gotta really pop off with it. If you're not just sitting there pressing R and going, I'm going all out. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, your team doesn't know what you're doing. Suddenly you're gone. You do no damage if you don't start screaming. So when you start screaming, like suddenly the yeah, the game's over. <laughs> you just win. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, that is going to do us here at the low budget LCS. Uh, Gap Topsu, do you have anyone you want to shout out real quick? Uh, I mean, Earl King is just uh, broken. Uh, big shout outs to my boy uh, Toku Finn who can never make it, and uh, Arcadius for being the greatest uh, cheerleader ever. Team Laser Moon will come back one day. Who knows when? Maybe next season. Maybe we'll try to get everybody back together again. But uh, yeah. All right. And with that, uh, sandbag. Why don't you take us out with uh, your your classic closing phrase? My classic, classic closing catchphrase. I mean, I only have my ladies and gentlemen for my opening. I don't have a closing one. So this is where I just say um, good night from the low budget LCS. My name has been Sandbag. You know, follow follow us on all those socials. Papa Boa, a pleasure to cast with. I look forward to being able to interact with you in future. And have a lovely, lovely night, ladies and gentlemen. Catchphrase. <laughs>